Today we're going over the Bose Alto Frames, audio sunglasses with built-in Bose speakers. How do they look? How do they sound? Let's break it down. Welcome back guys. Today we are going over the Bose Alto Frames. I did recap a full list of their pros and cons in the description box below. Also guys, if you want to jump ahead to any part of the video, I'll include timestamps down there as well, as well as links to where you can find these online. I do want to mention guys that this video is not sponsored. I was not paid by Bose. These sunglasses were sent to me for review, but all the opinions expressed in this video are my own. Also guys, be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video, because if you don't find that the Bose frames have all the features you're looking for, I also do have another recommendation for an alternative that might make more sense for your needs. But with that being said guys, let's now start today's review of the Bose frames. The Bose Alto frames are part of Bose's debut line of Bluetooth sunglasses with built-in Bose speakers. The clean matte black sunglasses give you the ability to listen to music not only wirelessly, but also earlessly. Well, earlessly is not really a word, but they do give you the ability to listen to music, audiobooks, and take phone calls, all with an open ear design, keeping your ears free so you can be more alert of your surroundings. And if you guys haven't tried audio sunglasses before, they are a game changer. The ear-free audio experience allows you to listen to audio discreetly while you're out doing your daily activities. The Bose Alto frames utilize Bluetooth 5.0 technology, which allows you to listen to music apps wirelessly, such as Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music. They also allow you to access apps like Google Maps or Waze for directions and GPS. And from my testing, they've maintained a consistent Bluetooth connection with my phone. You'll also notice the Bose frames have an integrated microphone so you can take and make phone calls with AI voice control. On the bottom of one side of their frames, you'll notice a dedicated multifunction button. And this button gives you access to Siri, Google Assistant, lets you check your battery life on them, and it also allows you to play and pause your music. Now I will say guys that these Bose frames do have a bulkier body than their regular non-audio sunglasses counterparts, but I feel that is to be expected because I imagine the only way to fit in their audio technology is pretty much to thicken the frame's temples a bit. And while the frames are thicker than most sunglasses, you will notice that at the end they begin to thin out with slimmer temple earpieces. Another thing I like with the Bose frames is that the Bose branding isn't too overbearing, so that's always a nice touch. The Bose frames also come with a hard carrying case, a magnetic charging cable, a microfiber pouch, and a quick start guide. So how exactly do the Bose frames work? Well, they actually have what they call miniaturized Bose speakers behind each little temple earpiece. I'm not sure exactly what that means, miniaturized Bose speakers, but if you could see right there, so they're a little hard to see, but they're really small speakers right up there on the edge of the temple earpiece, and they're on each side of the frame. And once you put these on, those little miniaturized speakers are near your eardrum, but they keep your ear free. So, but the cool thing about that, guys, is that once you have these on and you have music playing from your phone, pretty much no one else can hear the music. It's all kind of discreetly placed through your ears. And the only way I've noticed anyone else could really hear you, the music coming from your sunglasses, is if you turn up the volume to the max volume. But again, I wouldn't recommend that because then that takes away the whole discreet purpose of having, you know, discreet audio sunglasses. Plus, if you max out the volume, you might experience some tinniness when it comes to the highs. All right guys, so now I'm gonna actually do an audio test playing some music via Bluetooth from my phone, which is connected to my Bose frames to see if you guys can hear it once these are on your head. Because if you do have the frames off of your head and you do play some music through Bluetooth, you will be able to notice some of the sounds. But when these are pressed against your head, it kind of keeps the music discreet. So let's test it out. I'm gonna play a song right now. Let me know if you guys can hear this. Mmm. Can you hear those jams? I have the music about halfway right now on my phone. I don't want to max it out because I like the quality about halfway. Can you hear that? You guys let me know. I definitely... Didn't find it too noticeable when I had a friend test these on and I couldn't really hear it unless, like I said, they maxed out the volume. But again, that's not really comfortable. So as long as you keep your volume uh, below max volume, I think it will make the music pretty discreet. You can enjoy your music and go about your day. When it comes to audio quality, I will say that these are surprisingly impressive. I tested these listening to music with the Amazon Music app, listening to videos on YouTube, and even tested an audiobook with Audible. And again, through all of them, the audio is clear and the connection remained consistent. Now do keep in mind guys that audio sunglasses will never sound as full or have as deep of a bass as a pair of dedicated on-ear or in-ear headphones. But they definitely give you more than enough quality audio for listening while going for a walk or simply running errands. 
So now guys, I want to briefly cover the durability of the Bose frames because I believe when you're buying a pair of premium audio sunglasses, you definitely need to take the, their durability into account. So when it comes to their material, their build, they're actually made of plastic material, but they do feel sturdy in hand. Like I said, because they're thicker frames, they do have a little bit of a more durable, rugged feel. I feel like these could definitely handle a drop. One thing I do like about these frames is, is that they do have metal hinges. Let me see if you could see them here, if I zoom in right there. Although they're made of plastic, the frames are, they do have metal hinges on both sides, so I believe that will help with their durability over time in terms of the hinges. Now, in terms of being water resistant or waterproof, these are not waterproof. They're not designed to be submerged in water, so you can't go swimming with these, but they do have an IPX2 rating, which I believe stands for drip resistant. I wish they had a higher IPX rating like another pair I have of audio sunglasses, the Zungle Vipers. Their IPX4 rating give you a little more sweat resistance than the Bose frames, but still they do have that IPX2 rating. Uh, in terms of the actual dimensions of these frames, let me, I wrote them down here. Uh, they have a 52 millimeter lens width, so the lens width is 52 millimeters. The bridge width of the nose, that's 18 millimeters, and the temple length is 150 millimeters. So those are your dimensions for these frames in case you're wondering of their size. And when it comes to the lenses themselves, the lenses do have UV protection and they're rated to block 99% of UVA and UVB rays. But the one thing I don't like about these lenses, guys, is that they're not polarized. Ah, come on, Bose, right? You know, if you're paying $200 for a premium pair of audio sunglasses, you would think that Bose could have thrown in the polarization like they have on the Zungle Viper sunglasses. So that is a little bit unfortunate. They're not polarized. Now, if you're wondering about the battery life on these frames and their performance, they are rated with a 12 hour uh, battery life in standby mode and three and a half hours of continuous play time. Now the charging read time, it will take two hours to recharge these frames and they do include that with the frames. They do give you a um, USB charging cable you can use with your frames. And again, like I said, they recharge in about two hours, have a three and a half hour play time battery. Now when it comes to the internal technology built into the Bose frames, this is where the Bose Alto frames really shine. There are two cool technology features that definitely stand out that are worth mentioning. The first is that the Bose frames have their own dedicated Bose app called the Bose Connect app. With this app, you can receive updates to your Bose Alto frames right through the app by connecting through Bluetooth and future software updates will also unlock new features as they become available. But probably an even cooler technology feature with the Bose frames is that the Bose frames are Bose AR enabled. And if you're wondering what that is, Bose AR stands for Bose Augmented Reality. And one of those software updates I mentioned that Bose is working on is gonna be Bose AR. Now on Bose's website, it does say that several third-party augmented reality apps have partnered with them and are currently developing experiences for Bose AR enabled devices, such as these Bose frames. Now do keep in mind guys that these Bose AR features on your frames are not currently available, but they are in development according to Bose. So from my understanding, what I read on the website is that 30, that third party de uh, developers are currently working with them and they're gonna make like some fitness apps some travel apps, uh, exercise apps, learning apps that are have uh, audio augmented reality, which is, sounds a little cool because we've heard of visual augmented reality apps, but this would be one of the first uh, audio augmented reality apps that I've heard of. So. Definitely a cool feature, not available yet, but something that Bose is currently working on. So what are my overall thoughts on the Bose Alto frames? Well, I will say despite their open ear design, their ear-free design, the audio is actually surprisingly impressive. I also really like that design that it keeps your ears free and open because I find this an added bonus. It allows you to discreetly listen to your music or audiobooks or podcasts. No one really knows that you're doing that. You can just go about your daily activities, go for a walk, and really keep your be alert of your surroundings while still enjoying great sounding audio. The other thing I like with these frames is that even though they're a little thicker than your non-audio sunglasses, the fact that they're thinner towards the end definitely does help with the comfort factor. It makes them feel a little more comfortable because you don't have that thickness pressing against the top of your ear. But by far, the greatest feature of these is that you can walk around with a soundtrack to your life. But guys, these frames are not without their share of flaws as well. The fact that they're audio sunglasses does kind of make them thicker. Like I said, they have to fit that audio technology in there and they're not overly noticeable from afar. You know, you guys tell me if you're wearing these, you guys notice that they're overly thick. I don't really think you could tell. Um, so they're not really noticeably thick, but they do feel a little thicker on your head, especially if you're used to wearing regular non-audio sunglasses like we all are. These might take a little bit of time to get adjusted to. But by far my biggest issue with the Bose frames, guys, is that they're just not polarized. Ever since I first tried a pair of polarized sunglasses, 
I've always gravitated back towards polarized sunglasses. It's one of those things that once you try polarized sunglasses, it's hard to go back to non-polarized sunglasses. And I tested these out on a sunny day and they just didn't provide that same anti-glare that regular polarized, my regular polarized sunglasses provided. So, especially for the price coming in at $200 for these Bose frames, I really wish Bose would have included polarization in their lenses. I hope they can add that in a future implementation. But for me, that's kind of a deal breaker that they don't have polarization. So if polarized lenses are something that's important to you, I'd probably consider looking into the Zungle Vipers instead. They pretty much give you the same audio experience as the Bose frames, but they do offer a lot more customization in terms of colors. The lenses are polarized and they come in cheaper as well. So both have their pros and cons, but definitely something to consider if polarized lenses are important to you. If you guys would like to learn more about either one of these frames, I actually did make a comparison video going more in depth comparing the pros and cons of both the Bose frames and the Zungle Viper sunglasses. I'll link up that video if you guys want to see it up in the card up by there on the left, as well as down in the description box below. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.